Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the Atelier Lusso Andromeda in the King Cobra. We have a Ryan Crusack and this is the Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. We have a Visconti Manhattan Arco an AS Seal Il Gladiatore. We have a uh, Mr. Cypress, and this is Maple in the Woods. We have a Mr. Cypress, and this is a Kawari Nuri in the Deep Light uh, 1. We have a another Mr. Cypress in the Kawari Nuri, and this is Deep Light number 3. We have an ASC Bologna Extra, and this is in the Black Lutrance. We have a, uh, another ASC Bologna Extra, uh, and this is in the Arco Brown, and we have an ASC Bologna Extra in the Arco Verde. So I think let's take a look at these uh, pens inked up in a little bit more detail. So uh, this was a really nice resin. Uh, this was a, a pen that I had commissioned by Eric Atelier Lusso. Uh, and I think this was in 2018, I believe. Um, I handpicked this resin because I liked the gold and silverness of this resin. Um, I also liked that the pen was cylindrical. I could have had it made into uh, uh, maybe a Karina with a clip. But I chose the Andromeda. And I chose it also because of this lovely white King Cobra there. And I said to Eric... I would like that on the cap, not on the body. And I think he did very well there. Um, so this is uh, an Atelier Lusso pen. Uh, it does uh, have a little bit of a step down because the the cap is flush to the body. Uh, and it has a uh, number six size uh, Yovo steel nib there. Um, you cannot post the caps. It's not designed to do so. Typically, if you have a pen that is going to be flush like that, the, the cap to the body, you're probably not going to be able to post that cap. Um, but uh, the, that and also the step down doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I do find it's a little bit more section wise on the thinner side. I'm not sure that I'd want to go much thinner than that. I think it was, I want to say it was a nine and a half millimeter, maybe a 10 millimeter section diameter. Um, but I think I've actually gone smaller than that in, in some other pens. But uh, I do typically not like thin sections. I find I grip, death grip them uh, so very hard uh, and it will give me some uh, some hand fatigue. So I try to go for thicker sections. Uh, and this one definitely has a thicker section. It's the Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. It has a lot of uh, sort of uh, scales there from the dragon on the cap as well as this beautiful dragon and the dragon slayer here. Um, very, very good. And uh, you'll see that it does have uh, Ryan Crusack's uh, signature as well. There you go. And it says it's 99 of 150. Um, I don't know if 99 of these were sold or if people have handpicked limited edition numbers. I typically do not handpick my numbers. I know some people have to have the same number uh, where possible in each. Uh, it has a, quite a thick section here uh, and then a, a number six size uh, Yovo uh, steel nib. It's a medium nib. I had a broad nib on the Atelier Lusso. Uh, I typically do prefer broad. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen as well. Um, I do typically like broad nibs on the Yovo but uh, for that one I figured I was going to probably I want to say write with it more, but that's not the case because I write with all of my pens. But I just figured that I think I was going through a phase where I was going back into medium nibs more. So I decided to get a medium nib on that pen. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Manhattan Arco. It was made for ASC. ASC provided the Arco to Visconti to make. Uh, there were 70 of these made. Uh, there were quite a few breakages, as I understand it. And I believe from what I had heard, that were only around about 30 to 35 
of these that ever made it into a full pen. Uh, so these are extremely more limited. Uh, I was so glad I was able to pick this one up. I got it. I asked Sarge to go and hunt for one for me. Uh, it's got a number six size. The newer in-house Visconti nib, but it was the first batch of pens. So uh, it's quite a um, rigid nib on that pen. But uh, I do still like it, though. And it is a Visconti. So ultimately, uh, I have a lot of Viscontis. I have over 70. And uh, it was just one of those I said to Sarge, for the LA pen show, look, can you, if, if you're, you're going to be out in LA, if you, I know that these are going to be uh, provided at the LA pen show and they're going to be ultra limited. Can you please, please, please get one for me? And he said, I'm on the case, Dave. Don't you worry. And I also said to him at the same time, and if you can also get the ASC uh, Il Gladiatore as well. And when he came back, um, I, I think he was still actually in LA. He sent me a message and said, I've got them both for you. And I was ecstatic. And then I had to wait about another two weeks for the London Pen Show to go and pick them up. But I, I was so glad that, that he was able to come through for me. Uh, Sarge is a great guy. He's a dangerous guy because he likes taking your money. But uh, I, I still love Sarge. I've, I've not bought anything from Sarge, unfortunately, for quite a few years now. And I really should go back to Sarge and buy something more from him. Um, I, I love Sarge and I love Jazz, his wife. And uh, he has a huge, uh, massive, huge uh, collection of eye candy is probably the best way to describe it. And uh, sometimes it's difficult seeing the wood from the trees when you're at Sarge's table because there's so much glorious pens and material and urushi and it, it's... It's just, you go to a pen show, you've got to check out Sarge's table. So so the, this next pen was the Il Gladiatore from ASC. And, and this was one I wanted. It was, uh, I want to say, double the price of an ASC Bologna. I didn't want to pay it, but I also liked the design. I liked the Greek key band here. Um, and it also had a... Uh, very controversial uh, feed. It's an aluminium feed, not not a plastic, not an ebonite, and uh, it's it's very controversial because I don't think anybody did it before, and I don't think probably Manu actually thought about it when he was doing it, other than it looked good because it had a gold feed on, so it looked expensive, and yes, it does look expensive, but um, the feed doesn't hold ink as much as say an ebonite feed would or a plastic feed so it will write very wet to start with and then gradually get drier and drier and drier um but i still love this pen it, it's a uh, a number eight size nib the these uh so it has a like a bologna magic flex nib on it it's an 18 cat gold nib they only come in one nib width and it was medium um you can post the cap on this as well if you want to uh only 70 of these made uh, i do think actually 70 were actually made of these um but uh, unlike the, the Visconti, where certainly it was about half of the 70 allotment that were made. But it's a beautiful pen. I like the more browner, autumn-y like uh, colour to, to that Arco. Uh, I don't know if they did anything to that Arco or if it was... It almost looks as though it's been varnished um, to, to bring out a different colour. But I suspect that's not the case Uh and I suspect it was just a batch of Arco that, that looked like that. The next pen is a more newer pen that I've added to my collection, which is the Mr. Cypress. And it's a, an Arushi Macchia. And it's a maple in the woods. I like to call it maple leaf because essentially it is maple leaves here. And you can see that here. Uh, very, very beautiful pen. Uh, the blackness has some uh, sort of gold dust there. You have gold on each end as well. It is a cigar-shaped pen. You have a lot of um, sparkle gold there on the section. Uh, and then I've got a 14 count gold uh, Mr. Cypress nib on here. Uh, and uh, I've got uh, a medium nib. And uh, these are cartridge converters. You can't post the cap on these. Uh, I want to say pretty much on um, most of the 
certainly the ones I have, Mr. Cypress pens, you, you can't post the, the caps. Uh, these are cartridge converters, uh, uh, Mr. Cypress. Uh, the uh, ASC Il Gladiatore was a, um, a piston. Uh, that was a power vac, the Visconti, and these two are converters as well. Uh, but very nice. Uh, I like uh, how it feels. Slight step down there because, it, again, it is one of these uh, flush cap to body uh, setups. So you are going to find a little bit of a step down there, but... I know sometimes step downs do bother people. It doesn't bother me. Um, whenever I thought it would bother me, once I got the pen, it never did. The next uh, pen uh, inked up here is, again, a, another Mr. Cypress. And uh, this is, and I just want to make sure I've got the number right on this one. Uh, this is the uh, Deep Light 1. So it's a, a Kawi Nuri. Uh, sort of finish to it. Uh, it's an Arushi, it's a Makie, but just look at the Varden there. Uh, it does have gold uh, here on the cap and, and blue. Uh, it's a speckled or, or glittery blue uh, on the end cap here with red in between. Very, very nice. And you can see it here. I'll just, I'll just screw that up and I'll just twist it around. You can see uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful pen. And if I unscrew it here, it's got a glittery red section there. Slight step down. Uh, number 14 carat gold, Mr. Cypress medium nib. Again, it's a cartridge converter. Uh, this you can post the cap on, though. Um, and uh, it will post securely. Uh, but that, again, it, it's a nice, uh, nice uh, Arushi uh, Makie pen. And I have been adding a little bit to my collection more lately this year. Going a little bit overboard, I, I should say, as well. Uh, there's also this one, which, uh, again, is another Mr. Cypress. And uh, this is the uh, Deep Light 3, which um, is uh, a um, red pen. So you've got red up here, uh, transitions to gold uh, dust down here. So you can see it's a cigar-shaped pen. Um, and then if I turn that here, you'll see how beautiful that Varden is, the abalone shell. Really, really nice. And um, again, you've got another sort of sparkly red section, uh, a number six size, uh, 14 karat gold, medium nib, uh, Mr. Cypress nib. Again, cartridge converter. Uh, you can post these caps. Um, and what I have actually thought about doing, and I, I will show you here now, is that... I actually thought that this gold, this cap here that is designed for this pen would go quite nicely on this pen. So if I actually remove uh, the cap on that pen and put the cap here and screw it on. And so all I'm doing is essentially taking the caps from each of the other pens and putting them on. You almost have two different pens. And I actually do think that the red and the blue goes nicely together. And the gold and the gold goes nicely together. So I'm kind of tempted to leave it that way. I think that matches nice. Although you don't then have gold on this pen. I guess that's the only downside to to that. Um, but uh, I, I did think that that was potentially uh, an option there. That that I can do at some point if I want to. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just like you can interchange the caps because they are the same model. The next pen inked up is the ASC Bologna Extra and this is in the black Luchens. And you can see this is just a beautiful black and honey colored pen. I always ink this up with a honey colored ink. Uh, it is a pneumatic uh, filling mechanism. So it has a sack inside. Uh, a number eight size ASC Bologna extra nib. Typically, it's a medium nib. You can post the cap, but it's massively long, and it won't post past this metal ring here, so it won't post deeply or securely. Uh, you could post it, though. You could get away with posting it, but I think the cap is probably going to fall off in, in a lot of cases. The next pen inked up is the ASC Bologna Extra Arco Brown, and again, beautiful pen. I do love the Arco. Uh, I think I've got up to, 
I think it was eight Arco pens, a mixture of brown and green, mostly brown, four green. I should say mostly brown. If I've got eight pens, it'll be four brown and four green. Um, maybe I have more than eight. Um, just trying to think here. I must have more than eight. Maybe I've got nine pens. But uh, I do, I, I like this material a lot. I got this from Sarge as well. It was my first Arco from Sarge. And it's got a number eight size Magic Flex nib with an ABS plastic, sorry, not an ABS, an Ebonite feed. Um, it's a really good size, good weight for me. I love writing with it. Uh, you can post the cap, but again, it won't post deeply or securely. It does have three threads to try and line up that pattern. Uh, but uh, once you line that up, it, it lines up perfectly. Uh, if you're buying an Arco on the second hand market, do be very wary. Uh, that some of these will not line up because people have over tightened them uh, over time and, and the patterns may not line up. So uh, do be very careful. All of mine do line up. Uh, if I were to sell any of mine, they do line up. Um, I, I do not over tighten my pens. Uh, then the last pen here is the ASC Bologna Extra in the Arco Verde. And uh, I have four of these in my collection. Only two have been inked up. Uh, at least I am aware of. I'm pretty sure that that is the case. Uh, and I, I do like these a lot. I really only planned on getting two, but I got. I wanted one in the gold trim, one in the silver trim, and I actually ended up with two in the gold and two in the silver trim. Uh, they are really nice pens. Again, sack uh, inside the pen, uh, pneumatic fillers. Uh, you can, again, post the caps, but it's not going to post deeply or securely. And it's a massive wand. So uh, this is not really a pen that you're going to want to to um, uh, sort of post your cap on. And I will get that lining up. There you go. So uh, that's my uh, 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here inked up is the Atelier Lusso. And this is the Andromeda in the King Cobra. So we'll do an ink swatch. And you can see here, it's quite a nice uh, color ink. So this is the Atelier Lusso Andromeda in the King Cobra. Uh, and it's a broad and it's a steel uh, Yovo nib. And the ink in here is KWZ Old Gold, which is a, a beautiful gold ink. Um, I think I used to go with more of a sheening ink with this pen. And uh, I think that gold, uh, KWZ Old Gold, actually goes quite nicely. The next pen inked up is the Ryan Crusack. And this is the uh, Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. Uh, and we'll do an ink swatch. Now, um, Ryan does actually do these in, in various... The, the 16 means 16 millimeter in diameter. Uh, he does, I think, a 13, a 14, and a 15. So there's 150 of these, and I think he, he does one in each uh, thickness. So, so obviously quite a few pens, not just 150. But um, So this is the Ryan uh, Crusack uh, Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. Uh, and it's a medium, and it's a still Yovo nib. Uh, and then the uh, ink in here is uh, Noodler's Apache Sunset, which is the old name, not the new name. But uh, it's an ink that I still like. I only have one bottle of it, and I only had one bottle. And it's about half uh, empty or half full, uh, but it's a nice ink. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Manhattan Arco. And we'll do an ink swatch here. But as I mentioned before, th this is uh, quite a rare pen. Uh, only 70 in the limited edition run, but around about 30 or 35, I believe, were made. Um, so that in itself is quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, 
So this is the Visconti Manhattan Arco and it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And the ink in here is Diamine Ochre. And I remember um, that there was a lot of talk uh, around the time just after these were released and that Manu had been attacking Visconti at the time um, because there were lots of quality control issues and it turned out that uh, they, I don't want to say ruined, but they, they certainly, they, they couldn't, they only... Manu only gave a number, a certain number of rods to Visconti to make pens out of, and uh, some of the rods were warped or cracked, um, and they uh, just couldn't make the 70 pens. So there was a lot of bit of sort of Manu attacking Visconti, Visconti being fairly quiet uh, in the media about it. But uh, yeah, there was unfortunately not 70 of these pens made in the end. There were destined to be 70 made, but only about half of them were made. The next pen inked up is the ASC uh, Il Gladiatore. And we'll do an ink swatch here. But this is quite a wet writing nib. So this is the ASC Il. Uh, and I'm just going to need to ink that one back up again. Uh, Il Gladiatore, uh, and it's a medium, and it's an 18 count gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is, uh, again, Diamine Ochre. But you'll see the difference in colour between the two pens. One being a, a much finer, narrower writing nib, and one being a, a very a broader, wetter nib, and you'll see the difference there. The next pen inked up is a Mr. Cypress, and this is uh, an Arushi Makie. It's called Maple in the Woods. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I have a, a much lighter ink in this pen, more of an autumny autumnal ink, which I think, or full ink, which I think is, is nice. Uh, so this is Mr. Cypress. And it is uh, maple in the woods. And uh, it's a medium. And uh, it's a 14 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is Herban or J Herban. Uh, and it is uh, Ambre de Bermany. But that is um, a very nice autumnal coloured ink. Uh, it, it's an ink that um, I do like and I think I had about three or four bottles of. The next uh, pen inked up is uh, another Mr. Cypress. And it's a Kawi Nuri Arushi. And uh, it is the uh, Deep Light. And uh, I've already forgotten. Is this the one or is this the three? Let me just double check. Uh, it's the one. Deep Light 1. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch. And that uh, is quite a nice colour of ink. Uh, I just need to double check the ink because... I'm not entirely sure on this one. Uh, that's... Ah, yes. I know what one that is. So this is the Mr. Cypress. And it's the Kawi Nuri. Uh, Deep Light. One. And it's a medium and it's a 14 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is Akaman. And I want to spell this right because 
I keep doubting myself on this. Now it is t the the first n is two n, so I am right. It's uh, Ackerman Binnenhof Blues, uh, which uh, is a really really nice uh, blue ink, and I have to say um, it it's a little bit more towards a blurple, but that than blue, but. I, I do like it. And then the next pen inked up here is another Mr. Cypress. It's another Kaurinuri, uh Arushi Makie pen. And it's a Deep Light 3. And um, I'll do an ink swatch. And I've just realized I ink this up with a red ink. I ink up number one with a blue ink. Uh, and I should think 3 looks like an E. So it's in red although you could have it in a blue but let's not think about that so this is the mr cypress it's just might be how i'll remember it uh kawi uh nuri yurushi uh, and it's a deep light three and it's a medium and it's a 14 cat gold uh nib uh, and uh, the ink in here um, is yeah KWZ, uh, and that is Beef Eater Red. But that is is a nice, uh, slightly darker red, but not too dark. The next one inked up is the ASC Bologna Extra Black Luchens. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And these are typically very wet writing nibs. Just glide over a pool of ink. So this is the ASC Bologna Extra Black Luchens. Although I call it a black and gold Luchens. It's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is KWZ Honey, which is a, a very, very lovely honey colored ink. And uh, I do, I think I'm down to about half a bottle on that. And um, I probably will need to at some point buy another bottle of that because it is really nice. The next one inked up is an ASC Bologna Extra in the Arco Brown or Bronze. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And I always used to ink this up with Akamon um, SBRE Brown. But then even though I had a lot of the ink, um, it was very harder to come by. They kept going out of stock at Akamon. So I actually found an ink that was almost identical, which is Diamine Ochre. So this is the ASC Bologna Extra Arco Brown or Bronze, depending on how you look at it. And it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the uh, ink in here, as I mentioned, is uh, Diamine Ochre. And it depends on the pen you put it in. Uh, if you put it in a very dry writing nib, it will look very similar. If you put it in a wet writing nib, not so much. Um, but it's still a nice brown coloured ink. And then the last pen inked up is the ASC Bologna Extra in the Arco Verde. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And um, this is just an ink that I like. Um, and I just want to double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I thought it was. ASC Bologna Extra Arco Verde in a medium 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is Akamon. And it's Bazurden Wood Grown. But that is a, a very nice um, coloured ink. And it's one that I always ink up in this pen. 
and uh, I just love it a lot. So I think let's take a look at these pens inks up one more time. We have an Atelier Luso Andromeda in the King Cobra in a broad steel nib inked up with KWZ Old Gold. We have a Ryan Crusack Legend 16 Dragon Slayer in a medium steel nib inked up with Noodles Apache Sunset. We have a Visconti Manhattan Arco in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have an ASC Il Gladiatore in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have a Mr. Cypress Maple in the Woods in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Herban Amber de Bermany. We have a Mr. Cypress Kawi Nuri Arushi Deep Light 1 in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Ackerman Binnenhof Blues. We have another Mr. Cypress in a Kawi Nuri Arushi in a Deep Light 3 in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Beefy to Red. We have a ASC Bologna uh, Extra in the Black Luchance in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Honey. We have an ASC Bologna Extra in the Arco Brown or Bronze in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. And then we have a ASC Bologna Extra Arco Verde in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Ackerman Bazudan Woodgrown. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.